Hello, my lovely Libra friends. This is Maxine Taylor, and I have your July uh, 2022 forecast right here. I'm going to share it in just a minute. Uh, but I want to remind you of, of something I mentioned a while back, uh, earlier in the spring, on the heels of Roe v. Wade. Um, I realize that some of you are probably ready for my book, Your First Sexual Imprinting, and a method for releasing old emotional trauma. This book uh, is, excuse me, I live with a cat and I'm always covered with cat fur. This book is not an astrology book. It goes beyond astrology. The birth chart tells you what your programming is, but it doesn't tell you how to get rid of it. I have a technique called take back your life that does, and we can plug into any category. And uh, when the Me Too movement surfaced, I realized that so many women were coming forward um, com complaining about having been abused by men. And I realized that they were just reliving their programming and that they, they can end it, they can change it. And so I wrote this book. I interviewed 10 very courageous women who shared their earliest um, memory their earliest imprinting memory, because that is repeated through life and it doesn't have to. You can change it. And I've shown you how in this book. It's available on Amazon. Okay, now let's talk about your beautiful chart for July. First of all, let's start with Mars, the planet of passion, the planet of war, the planet of sex, the planet of um, <clears throat> do it now. Wherever Mars is in your chart, that comes first to you. And of course it moves around the chart. At various times, it's in various houses. Right now in your chart, it's in the seventh house of partnership. And that is the house that Libra rules, the seventh house of partnership. Um, and so partnership comes first to you, whether it's personal or business, you are throwing yourself into the one-on-one -on -one relationship and you'll find that the people you're attracting are putting themselves first so that you can also put them first. Now on the fifth, it's going to move into the eighth house, which it co-rules. Uh, Mars is the co-ruler of the natural eighth house, which is Scorpio. Pluto is the other ruler. Mars in the eighth house is going to undergo a transformation. The eighth house deals with other people's money, with loans, with uh, taxes, inheritances. It deals with secrets. It deals with transformation. And if you have anger issues that have been plaguing you or other issues of a passionate nature, they will undergo a metamorphosis a transformation in the eighth house. I love it. Jupiter, the greater benefic. It looks like this. It's a, a turquoise, uh, looks like a number four. This is the planet of blessings. It is abundance. It's joy. It is expansion. And it's in the shadow of the retrograde. It's going to go retrograde on the 28th. And this means that the blessings that it would normally pass on to you, pass along to you, will be kind of on hold until after November 24th when Jupiter goes direct. The heavy moving, the slow moving planets, we call them the heavy planets or the slow moving planets, take a long time to uh, move into retrograde and a long time to move out of retrograde. However, that's just how it is. And we're used to Mercury being retrograde and Venus retrograde. Well, this is the same deal, only takes more time. That's Mars. Venus, the planet of love and money and beauty and happiness. 
is the lesser benefic. Jupiter is the greater benefic. Venus is the lesser benefic. It's in your ninth house. And the ninth house is the house of the big picture, your higher mind. It's your principles and long distance travel and communication. And this is what you love to do with Venus in the ninth house. Are you uh, thinking of doing or are you pursuing a higher educational degree? Wonderful. Ninth house. Are you traveling? Wonderful. On the 17th, Venus moves into your 10th house and you are seen as a very loving leader. Venus in the 10th house brings popularity. And so you can move upward in your career if you choose to. Now, Mercury is the blue planet. This is our conscious mind. It's what we think about and talk about. It has been in your ninth house. So you've been talking about things that are uh, uh, in the nature of a principle rather than an idea. It's not the he said, she said. It's the concept, the big picture. It's really beautiful. On the fifth, it moves into your 10th house and you're thinking of moving upward in your career. You are communicating perhaps from a position of authority. And on the 19th, Mercury moves into your 11th house of friends and group activities and humanitarian organizations. Once again, this is what we think about and talk about. Now, the yellow planet, the sun, is the giver of life. Wherever it is in your chart is the center of your life. It's in your 10th house of career, your 10th house of leadership. And so with Venus and the sun and Mercury, all in your 10th house, move upward. Move upward. On the 22nd of July, the sun moves into your 11th house and the center of your life becomes uh, that a humanitarian and a friend to all. It's really beautiful. Okay, we have a full moon on the 13th and it's in 21 Capricorn. Find it in your birth chart and combine it with this. A full moon in the fourth house means home and family and real estate matters come to a head. Um, perhaps you've been thinking of buying or selling or renovating or renting a house, but this doesn't matter which uh, one of those categories it is, it comes to a head to be dealt with, which is really cool. And two weeks later, we have a new moon. And just before the new moon, for about two days, we're in the dark of the moon and nothing's happening. On the 28th of the month, the same day that Jupiter goes retrograde, we have a new moon. And uh, it's in five degrees Leo, five degrees 39. Uh, let me get my glasses on here so I can be a little more accurate. Um, Yes, 539 of Leo. Um, and so your uh, desire to be a friend to all, your humanitarian instincts are once again activated beautifully. So isn't that a gorgeous forecast? I hope you will join me next month when once again, I take another look at your personal forecast. Um, if you want a really personal forecast, go to my website and order one based on your birth data. And that way I'll be able to answer your specific questions about you. So till we meet again, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.